Oof. <laughs> so it's a bit of a stinker. <laughs> it's a bit of a stinker. Okay, so Jax, uh, singer songwriter, pop singer, pop singer songwriter, comedian, 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 uh, comedian, I guess. Uh, pop punk artist, uh, ukulele owner, maybe too, is out here with her debut album, Dear. Joe. Now, I had heard of Jax quite a little bit of a while ago because I heard a song called Victoria's Secret, which lands on this album at the very end, and it is the final track. 20 whole tracks we have on this album. 20. <sighs> 20. And this lands at the end of the album. Now, I heard it through the Hot Songs section on Apple Music. I am an Apple Music user. I'm not being paid to say that. <laughs> I wish I was. Yeah, I wish I was. But I'm just here to say that I sometimes scroll through playlists, hot songs playlists, just to keep up with what's trending, just to keep up with what's popular, what's popping off, what's in the charts, what's what's making waves, just because I'm a music man. I, I, this is my whole thing. I, I like to keep up with music, all kinds of music. And I just like to be in the know, obviously. It's it, it's a pretty obvious thing for me, personally. Perhaps other people out there don't care. I get it. I can see why. But I just like to. And I heard this song, Victoria's Secret, quite a while ago. And I wasn't too keen on it. I wasn't really a fan. I found it a little hokey. Like, it, it, it's got this whole concept about... Victoria's Secret, well actually I know what Victoria's Secret is and it's actually that it's a whole bullshit thing that impacted young girls and their body image and how they perceive themselves, this, that and the other. You know, I, lyrically inoffensive and is trying to promote a positive message, but just done in a bit of a way that's a bit hokey. It's got that pop punk kind of plastic sound that you hear a lot on TikTok when you're scrolling through and you've got these like really serious bands that are like, we're pop punk. And then they start singing some nonsense and it's just got that kind of like millennial Gen Z feel to it. Even though pop punk as a, as a vibe has always been a very youthful sound, we've somehow turned it into a bit more of this kind of like updated new wave of this like Gen Z millennials, millennial sound. I can't really describe it without using those words. And I feel like those kinds of words can be a bit reductive and annoying. But I feel like if you get what I mean, you know what I mean. If you've heard it before, you know, Gale, A, B, C, D, F, U, that kind of vibe I can only use like Gen Z and Millennial to describe it because it's just got that whole vibe about it and it's just really cringe, hokey. The, the song had that. I didn't hate it, but I, I wasn't a fan. Now, I, I, I just kind of threw it aside, didn't think anything of it, moved on. Never really listened to it again because obviously I didn't enjoy it. So why would I? Didn't think about Jax again. Couldn't even remember her name, to be honest. And then as it turns out, at the end of June, we've had a bit of a quiet period. We had a bit of a buzz at the start of June, but the past few weeks haven't had that many releases. But I noticed on Rate Your Music and our Album of the Year that this album from Jax was getting massively review bombed. Like the ratings are ridiculously low for it. Like we're talking like worst of all time on the sites. That's how low they are. They haven't got that many ratings. So I don't know how high up on the worst section they would be. But we're talking really low. Like really, really low. And I was pretty surprised. And I was like, okay, you know what? It's time to dive in because I haven't had that many bad albums this year. I've not heard that many awful albums this year. Let's just see what this is all about. And lo and behold, it's the Victoria's Secret singer. And let me say right now, that ends up being one of the better songs on the album. <laughs> because as much as I don't like that song, and I'm very surprised to see it do so well, like it did... It, 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 it's certified silver in the UK. It's certified gold in America. I barely even know like anyone that knows this song, to be honest. It's a very weird situation we've got going on here with Jax. But people clearly liked it and listened to it, and it made it into the charts. I didn't like it, but it wasn't awful. And yet, somehow, the rest of the album gets worse than this. 
She led with her best, I can at least say, and even her best is mediocre. We're looking at potentially the worst album I've heard this year so far. We're only in July, we've got plenty of time to top that, I'm sure, but basically, to get to, get to the point after I've just spent minutes and minutes of you know, pref prefacing it and telling you who she is and how I discovered her, it all boils down to me saying this is the worst album of the year. This is this is this is terrible. This is awful. This is awful. What I really don't like about this album is how it tries to convince you that it's funny, and it tries to be all dry and he he he. I'm just poking. I'm just saying silly things. You get it. Yeah ha ha. Tries to like break the fourth wall. It makes you you know, like, think that you're on board with her because she's making references that you've heard before and the references are just, like, the most, like, annoying, like, again, very Gen Z, millennial sort of uh, memes you've seen that are way overused. There's a, there's a, there's a freaking Je 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 Jeffrey Epstein, Epstein didn't kill himself thing on here, as if that's not like years old at this point. There's a Hawk Tour reference, good God. There's a freaking, um, that mama isn't real, blah, 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 that whole thing. Like, it's just got all of like the most annoying like references and it just turns them for what might have been funny for a brief period into the least funniest thing ever. And if that wasn't enough, the vocals and the delivery is just like really unlikable on this album. I can't really describe her voice, but at times she just is like not really trying to sing. I guess it's part of the act. I guess it's part of the shtick, the character, but nothing lands. Like even if something could be funny, on this album, the way she says it and the way she delivers the lines, it's just not funny at all. And then you get the like really overly serious songs where she really tries to, to sing. Like she, you can't even at that point excuse the fact that it's just a joke. No, she's trying to sing on tracks like How Dare You and tracks like I Choose Violence. And good God, she is just not very good at singing. And maybe a lazy thing to say someone can't sing because you don't need the most technically proficient voice in the world to be able to make good music. And I know there'll be people out there that go, well, you can't sing, Ryan. You can't sing. So who are you to speak? Well, 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 I don't profess to be able to sing. I didn't go on X Factor, not X Factor, American Idol. I didn't go on American Idol and come third. She came third. What? Just the whiniest singing on some of these tracks, man. She's wearing my T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the whole whininess of it. And it's like this whole concept about how she breaks up with a guy and then he gets with a carbon copy of her. You've heard the story before. It's just the way she's singing on this track. It's so ugly sounding. You've also got I Choose Violence, which is a very serious song topic where she's singing about, you know, older guys getting with immature and younger girls just to kind of like use them and it not really be a situation that works out for the girl and it's all a bit dicey with the age gap and things like that. You know, very serious stuff. I wouldn't down talk it. But then like she can't even make this song without ripping off Olivia Rodrigo. Like she does the whole vampire thing at the start. And I had to have a look. I was like, okay, maybe somewhere there's a reference, like it's it's credited. It might be, but I couldn't find a credit. I couldn't find a credit to that song. But the introduction and the way she's singing, it's exactly how Vampire starts by Olivia Rodrigo. And then it kind of starts to build up in the kind of same way that Happier Than Ever does by Billie Eilish. Like, okay, maybe then at that point you can go, well, she gets away with it because it's an homage and it isn't necessarily a ripoff, but it's just like the, the, the Wish version of both of those songs because her lyrics are so on the nose, the vocals aren't impassionate enough to sell it, and the entire thing just doesn't work because you need a more powerful energy like those other two songs have to make it work. But, but she doesn't have that. What she does have though, what she does have my friends, as you'll be glad to know, 
ukulele interludes. Yes, because everybody knows that was that is what makes a great album. A ukulele interlude. Not one, not two, not three, about 15 of the fuckers. There's so many ukulele interludes. This album could have been fine, right? Like I might have enjoyed a lot of these tracks. I absolutely don't in case you hadn't already figured that bit out. But okay, fine. Imagine if I in a in a world where I enjoyed some of the songs, maybe half the songs, maybe thought they were decent. Well, this album would still get downgraded massively because of the amount of crappy ukulele interludes that flood the whole thing. Why are there so many? And why are they so painfully unfunny? You've got this whole neuro spicy is better than being bland. That's like trying to like do the whole like neurotypical mindset brain thing and tries to be all like, oh, it's it's spicy actually, and it's, it's better than being bland. And it goes into this, this like pop punk outro that makes absolutely no sense. You've got the Adam Sandler interlude where she just has this whole love letter to Adam Sandler. It's trying to be ironic. She says Adam Sandler has Riz. It's just like, oh, it makes it, make, it makes it worse by hearing all of these like so obviously like copied internet meme comments, uh, joke things. And she says it and it's just, ah. Oh. The, the fact that this already sounds bad today, imagine this in years to come. Because you've got to be ahead of the curve here. Because I'm calling this the worst album of the year now because I'm thinking of the future. I'm not just a present day man. I'm thinking of how we look towards this album in the future because I'm ahead of the curve already because these words will be dated then. So then imagine hearing this album then and hearing saying Adam Sandler has Riz to try and be quirky. He, 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 I'm so funny. Oh, do you get the joke? I said Riz, ha, ha, ha. When the word is out of like public consciousness and nobody says that word anymore and a new word's replaced it, this is going to sound heavily dated and it already sounds dated now. So I'm, I'm telling you from, the, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm talking to you from the past to the future and telling you that this is going to sound even worse in five years. I'm, I promise you. She does the whole, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. But like, it's about having the, 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 the I'm not, yeah, you know what, you know what, I, I don't want to say it. It's a bit weird to say on, on, a, on a YouTube channel, public platform. You, you know, what, you probably get the reference. Yeah, yeah, you get it. You get it. Zombieland, look. I think this is a song you need to play. If you've got this far into the video and you've enjoyed me ranting about this album, I think this is a song you need to play because I want everybody to hear this and suffer with me because you have all heard AJR. You're, you're nerds. You're nerd just like me. We've heard AJR. If you're watching my channel and you watch YouTube reviewers, you have heard of AJR. You're in the circle. You're in the know. You know how bad they are. Now, think of AJR but with a female singer, that's his song. There's a feature called Hardy, and it, it, it get the get this guy right out of here. This guy can piss right off. No, no need him. And you've got them two coming together over this really horrible instrumental, goofy, goofy references to Zombieland. It's just all like, ugh. Then there's super bad later on. She's obviously trying to make like homages to these like early comedy films, probably from when she was a kid, a teenager-ish. I was that age when I saw those films too. I get it, fine, sure. But this is the one where she's like, oh, this is going to end super badly for you because you're with a guy that's really bad for you. And it's just like really bad. Everything about this man is just, ooh. if it doesn't get any more basic than that, because so many of these tracks have the most basic like rhyme patterns and references and just song concepts. A song for Chelsea is kind of a, a letter to, a, you know, a young girl being like, oh, you better be ready for, for the future. You're going to get all these bad monsters and bad bears and all these other animals. And, oh, it's just like, yeah, you got to look out for those. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just like turning the most serious topics into like the the worst like songs you could imagine. It's just It's just really hokey sounding. I can't think of any other word for it. It just all sounds really immature. The instrumentals are like really plain. It's hilarious that she was talking about being neuro spicy, 
and that yet the entire album is just super bland. Like, where's the spice? Look, without even hearing the album, I think with all the references I've made to really stupid memes and her attempting to try this comedy shtick that just isn't working out at all, you can imagine how bad this all sounds when it's like kind of over this like, Playmobil type instrumentation like it just all sounds really like cheap and tacky uh, the songs just don't really uh, melodically please your ears she isn't the best singer she's intentionally not being that great of a singer at times but then when she's trying she's really not good it's just like ooh, the whole thing ooh, ooh. The ukulele, the amount of ukulele on here, my friends, it is not okay. It, it, we do not need this amount of ukulele. Just whipping it out after every other song for just some unfunny shtick that she throws in. It, it's just way too much. It's trying to be self-aware, but it ends up being like the guy with the acoustic guitar at Glastonbury, you know, harassing Dua Lipa's day and pretending like he's got this amazing song and she's just there like, mm, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. Like that's her whipping out the ukulele. Usually people with ukuleles are quite self-aware. They're kind of like the less annoying acoustic guitar dude. They've got a bit more like, I'm being a bit cheesy, I'm being a bit goofy, I'm being a bit silly. She's trying that, but like she ends up sounding more like the acoustic guitar guy. It's just unfunny, unpleasant, unenjoyable, uninspired. Nah. It's a 3 out of 10 from me. It's it's a no. I don't get too negative on this channel very often. But this album I just had to talk about because I'd heard it a few times and I was like, I've got to I've got to make use of listening to this album multiple times. I can't suffer in silence. I have to tell people about this. I have to put it out there and be like, guys, there's this really bad album out there. <laughs> it's got a bunch of cheap gags, dated meme references, unfunny jokes, and a bunch of not good singing. Let me know your thoughts though. If you have heard this already, I, I, I apologize and hope you're okay. If you haven't, maybe check it out <laughs> if you're curious and then let me know. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Do have a good day. Subscribe as well. would love to see you stick around and yeah, check out my Patreon if you're feeling very generous. Goodbye.